POCs, but at least 33, the top 33 POCs and uh, 30, 32 POCs and um, some demos. I have five live demos I want to do uh, for you guys, right? So here, let's, um, on this repository, just to situate you guys, I have a list of uh, use cases that both traditional AI and generative AI can do. I have uh, some curated list of libraries I selected. Uh, I recommend you guys take a look. I also have papers uh, recommended for reading, modules, posts, and videos, okay? Um, so let's start taking a look uh, on uh, the POCs, right? So POC32, we're gonna start with um, stable diffusion tree. So uh, this is using Python. And as you see here, I'm just using Python standard libraries, request an OS. There's no other external library. And we're just doing a request for the uh, Stability AI website. Uh, I had to go there and create an account and they gave me a token. This token was exported in my environment variable. And then the prompt I gave was, okay, can you generate a cat wearing a black uh, glasses, right? And I want this in a JPEG and I just saving the image in my file system. So you see very few lines of Python and I got this beautiful image of this cat um, using glasses, right? And this is using stable diffusion tree. Pretty cool, right? And this was free. I didn't have to pay anything, okay? So that's the first POC. Now let's go to the second POC. Um, here I'm doing linear regression to be able to predict values. I'm using sklearn and pandas in Python. Um, so I'm using the Boston data set, which has a bunch of house prices in Boston. Uh, so I load the, the data set. Um, we do the training, right? And then I'm using Ridge as a regression uh, module. Then I'm doing a prediction and I am plotting this prediction. So if I go back here, I can see the matplotlib result and we can see the linear regression. Um, and we can see here we have the x, y, so we have the, the true values. And then on the left, we have the predicted uh, values, right? So, so you can use machine learning to predict house prices. So that's the POC 31. Now let's go to POC 30. Uh, here I have something in Java. I'm using Spring AI and using Onks. If you remember the previous videos, uh, Wonk, Onks is a portable format where we can have uh, a module from, let's say, Keras running on um, TensorFlow, or uh, you can have, um, you can do the model in Python and run in Java. That's exactly what I'm doing here. So I had to run some command lines to be able to create a module. And for those curious about the model, right, I'm using a hugging face model called all mean LM, uh, L6v2. I almost have all the model here. There's one file that's missing because this file is 1.4 gigabytes and I did not want to commit that on my GitHub. There's no need to, right? So these are files from the model. Uh, and then uh, on application property, I had to put this dummy uh, API key, even though I'm not using OpenAI, and clearly that's not my API key, right? But I had to do that in order to work. Um, let's see the code, right? So this is a classical Java Spring application. Oh, let me start with the dependencies first, right? So I'm using Spring Boot 323. Um, as you see here, I have these Spring AI transformers. And I have um, classical Spring Boot dependencies, right? Um, nothing different than that. So one dependence. And then on the code, we just need two things. So we need a config. So I have this transformers uh, config where I'm going to put at configuration and I'm defining a bin. Uh, it's a transformer embedding client. Um, so we need to define this bin here because Spring also has a default embedded client under the hood, right? So that's why we need to do this overriding, at least how it's working right now. Uh, and then we're gonna create an embed client. Um, then here we're gonna load the module 
uh, this should be in our class path, right? And we need to um, pick the the last neuron, uh, the output neuron. Uh, you can find that on the configs or on the model card. So it's called token embeddings. Um, and that's it. We have a module that we can use. Now, if we go to the code, um, I can go here to a simple controller. Uh, what I'm doing here is creating embeddings, right? So I just use my embedding client and I ask for some embedding of these two different words and I shall get some tensors back. I put the output of the endpoint uh, here. Let me go back. Uh, hold on, let me close and just come back here. Uh, right here. So you see the tensors here, right? Uh, I could be doing something more interesting here, like similarity search or other things, like sentiment analysis, generating image, and so forth and so forth, right? Just now you can use the same base code and just change the model into something different. Okay, so this was PLC 30. Now let's go to 29. Um, now I'm using a different framework uh, in Java again. Uh, this one is called DJL, which is like a funny name, but it's a deep uh, Java learning. It's, um, for, uh, it's an AWS guys. Uh, I think AWS is behind this. Uh, and here we're gonna do some handwritten uh, recognition, right, uh, using MLP. So here I have the module, right? Um, I have the module stored here. Um, this is very cool. Um, I, I spent some time debugging uh, this to understand what, what's happening under the hood, right? But you have this dependence. Um, I'm using uh, tokenizers from Hugging Face. They have this concept of a zoo. Uh, so zoo is like how you're gonna get your modules. Uh, the models could be on the fine system, could be on S3, could be on Hugging Face. And then you have like the um, modules like for data sets. So here I'm using some data sets. Uh, and they have this PyTorch engine. So actually it's running PyTorch under the hood. Um, PyTorch uh, C++ implementation. So there's a SO file, Java load, there's some JNE going on under the hood. Um, you guys also can see onks here, right? Um, there's some backend for TensorFlow. I, I don't need all of those here, right? Uh, I, I probably can do some cleanup on the libraries. But if we go to the code, right, um, I have this numbers uh, five, which is I wanted uh, the model to predict and tell me what number it's here, right? And if you look on the code, what's going on here is that uh, I have these arguments where I can pass a bunch of uh, uh, configurations like epochs, batch size, uh, how many GPUs they're gonna use, if this was pertained or not, etc. right? Uh, and um, the real fun, there's two files, right? Main is where we are doing the training. So the training is happening in Java. Like for instance, here you're saying uh, five epochs, right? And this is the model I want to run. Um, so here we are uh, loading an MLP module we are using a data set called MNINST, right? It's a data set of uh, handwritten numbers. Um, then here we are using a trainer. So we are start training the module. Uh, I need to do some conversions because NIST is a 28 by 28 gray scale. Um, and in, in Java here, you're gonna have ND array. So it's like some copy on NumPy uh, happening here. Uh, in Java, you're going to view objects like very, very similar to NumPy. Um, then we uh, initialize the training, we do some fit and we get results. So there's this callback when the training is done. So you can save the module uh, on the file system, right? And you can see me writing stuff here, right? And also printing some accuracy and results of the loss uh, function. Now, let me um show the output here what this program is outputting so the output we get is this right uh, so here you can see the training 
happening, right? Although the code is in Java, is PyTorch running on uh, uh, SO uh, file, right? C++ under the hood. Uh, and here I was just saying, hey, uh, remember the image I showed you guys before, right? It was a five and I hope it predicts correct. And we can see some distribution here saying, okay, uh, he doesn't believe it's a seven. Uh, he has a bit more confidence than two, a bit more on a eight, a bit more on a four, but it's like 71% confident is a five. So a yeah, good job is a five. Okay. So that was the POC uh, for handwriting uh, recognition. The next POC, I'm going to talk about action recognition, right? Mm -hmm. So what we are doing here, same framework, right? Same ideas. Um, here I'm loading an image from the file system. Uh, and then I have this beautiful DSL on DJL where um, you can, um, you can pass like what uh, some filters, what engine we're going to use. I use MXNet, so it's not PyTorch anymore, right? Uh, and then I have this predictor class where I can do predictions, right? And my prediction here will say, given the aim, image, the, uh, give me an action, right? So the image I have is this image, right? And what I got it back was like, okay, so long jump uh, is this probability, volleyball is this, uh, javelin throwing is this, hammering and throw discuss is this, right? So throw discus is 999%, right? So it's, it's, it's quite good. And here's the full program output, right? Um, me running uh, the thing in Java, okay? So you can pred predict actions uh, of the image. Now the next one, now we're gonna do some more Gen AI. So here we are using Java and we are using Langchain 4J. And there's two different things here, right? So we are generating text using a GPT-2 module from Hugging Face. So this time the module is on S3. So there's a URL on Amazon to download from S3. And there's this DSL where we load the module. We're saying we're going to do it for a PyTorch, right? And then here uh, we have this predictor where we're going to run some predictor. And what we want to do is to generate text. So we are getting some tokenizers, doing the encodings, and then we generate and we're going to get the output here. Um, I'm going to show the output, but just showing the code first. The other piece of code we have here is the QA inference. So this is using a different model called BERT. Um, and this is, um, we have, um, so when you're doing prompt engineering, there's a few concepts, right? There's like few shot where you used to use very few words and you give no context to the LOM. Uh, there might be um, some chain of thought where, where you're giving some information, some context to the LOM, and then also your instruction, right? Uh, and there's this other uh, idea called thought, which is a tree of thought. Um, so here uh, I have some uh, context which is saying, hey, I have this paragraph that says that, you know, BBC Japan was generating entertainment channel, was operated between December 24 and 28. This is operating the Japanese uh, distributed fold, right? Um, so I'm asking, okay, when, when did uh, BBC Japan start broadcasting, right? Uh, this is my question. This is my prompt to the OM, and this is my context, right? So um, this, this is a task that we call question answering. So I have this QA input. Uh, it's not quality assurance, it's question answering. Um, and there's this criteria DSL where we load the type of the task we want, which is a QA input here. We set um, the full engine and here we set the module, right? So we're using this bad module. And here we call the predictor uh, to predict something. So not, not bad, not a lot of lines of code. Not, it's not as good as Python, but it's not bad. And the outputs we're going to get here is, is this, right? So for to generate text, we got uh, this answer here. This was the text generated this last night. And for the QA infer inference, right? If you remember, we were asking when 
UPC Japan start operating and this is the answer, December 24, that's correct. Okay, so that is Transformers using Java. Now the next one, I just want to show the tool in ONCs, how we can export formats, right? So this one here, we just uh, have the CLI. So you can style these three uh, dependencies. And here I'm running ONCs and generating a module. So I'm just showing the output to you guys. And I have this SH. Uh, so this is the uh, module in Hungry Face I want. And I want to generate it on the same folder, right? And so I have this optimal CLI. And I can do export uh, ONCs. And that's how I export a module using ONCs. ONCs is pretty neat. And now we can import this in Java or other language if you want. Uh, so this is onks. Now I have some bedrock. So here is using uh, AWS. Um, so bedrock is how you can do Gen AI on AWS. So this is Python. Uh, here are some dependencies. I don't need all these dependencies, right? Uh, but here um, in my code, so I pointed to my own AWS account. Um, I have to create this um, policy there allowing bedrock to invoke a module right and when i log in on bedrock i also had to enable some of the foundation modules i'm using llama 3 yeah i'm using llama 3 uh 8 billion and uh once i attach this policy uh then i can then what we can do here is like we can use boto which is like the AWS SDK client for Python. Uh, and then we're going to point to a service, which is Bedrock Runtime. I'm running on Virginia because it's cheaper, right? And I'm doing this prompt. I'm saying, okay, write a Medium blog post uh, on how to use Amazon Bedrock, on how to write an article, and how to use Bedrock. Uh, and then I'm giving this concept of temperature. Temperature um, is one of the hyperparameters or features, if you will, uh, for the LLMs, it tells how much the module is going to be creative or not. Um, and um, that, that's what it does, right? So you can control how much you want the module to be creative or how much you want to be strict. Um, and then what we're doing here is like saying uh, the module I want to use. And then it's just a REST call, right? So you just do a bedrock invoke uh, and then, sorry that then then we pass the, the body the module um, some content uh, headers uh, in rest and then we're gonna get some JSON result and I'm gonna print uh, the result so here I have uh, what the program would output and here's my blog post about uh, bedrock right so it's pretty cool okay so that was bedrock uh, one, one thing I just want to say about Bedrock, uh, you need to pay for the additional foundation modules. So if you use like a proprietary module like Stable Diffusion, like from OpenAI, like from Claude, from Anthropic, right? You also need to pay the cost of that module. But if you use Lemma, uh, it's open source, right? So you are in a better place. Um, okay, so that was Bedrock. Now there's this uh, other module called uh, Py tree that I use to generate code in Rust. Um, so this is Python again. So I'm using transformers from Hugging Face and I'm using Gradio. So, so Gradio, Gradio is, uh, you know, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Um, it's, it's a very cool thing in Python. Python has this uh, two that I know at least nice frameworks to create UIs for machine learning. One is called Gradio and the other one is called Stringlit. I have POCs with both. Uh, but then um, going back what I'm doing here, creating some threads, um, some modules in Hungry Face, you need to be authenticated and passing your API token. So I'm using this Microsoft model like Phi3. Um, and I'm running on CPU because my GPU is kind of old. You guys will be surprised that everything I'm running here is on GPU and it's fine, it's CPU and it's fine. There's few models that took some hours, right? I had one or two things that took me like 20 hours 
to run. I had to learn run overnight and most of the day, but most of the things are like pretty fast in five, ten minutes I could get results. Um so in doing some um some some chat application here, right? Uh with the OOM. And uh there's this thing where we generate an interface with uh Gradio. So let me show the output here will be cooler right so this this is what's going on right so i started saying hey uh here's my prompt right uh and by the way this is graduate generated this interface to me it didn't code anything together so i say uh write a hello word program in rust and i got a hello program in rust and even explain uh the code to me it's pretty pretty, pretty, pretty good okay now the next poc this was code in Rust. Okay, now we're gonna see some customer segmentation, right? So for product recommendation. So, <clears throat> so I have this uh, program uh, to generate some fake fake data for me. So it create it creates some products like iPhone 15, MacBook Pro, iPods, Apple Watch, and iPod Pro. It writes that in a CSV for me. And then I have a file, oops, sorry guys, let's go back there. So then I have a file where I do the training and another one where I do the inference. So main, I believe is a training, yeah. So I'm loading my uh, synthetic fake data. Uh, I, I, sorry, I also have another CSV with some purchase history that I generated. Uh, and then I have this word to vec uh, module, right? And uh, then I'm gonna pass my purchases there and I'm gonna save a module. So here I'm saving the module in the file system. I will gonna be, uh, in this case, I believe it's a single file. Let me check. Uh, yes, it's a single file. This one is binary, right? Um, so I save the file. And then after that, um, I have this product recommender, right? That it's going to be able to do recommendations using word to fact So it's going to do some similarity search and it's going to recommend a product. And here I'm, I'm, I'm loading the model and just asking for some recommendations. Saying, hey, I bought an iPhone 15, what you would recommend me? I bought an Apple Watch, what would you recommend me? Uh, the other file, and then I can show you the output, I'm doing some clustering just to be able to, uh, k-means, as we saw, uh, supervised learning, right? Um, and uh, just to plot the results. And the outputs are this, right? So this is the plotting of the products, right? And this is the recommendations I got. Uh, so when I bought an iPhone, it said, hey, okay, go buy a MacBook Pro. When I bought an Apple Watch, it said, go buy, buy some iPod uh, Pros, right? So this is how we can do product recommendation. Now, the next one, I'm using Keras and I'm doing a spun uh, classification. So now I have a model in a separate file. Here we have a neural network. Um, so I'm creating a neural network. And uh, this file is really both for the training and the prediction. So main is where I have my training. So I'm loading uh, some uh, spun data. So I had some uh, label data right here, which I created. Um, so I have examples of like giving this text, this is a span, this other text is not a span, right? So I give a couple of examples of span and not a span. Um, and then here uh, on the training, so I load uh, this data set, I do the training, right? Um, I have a tokenizer. Uh, I do some paddings, right? I have my encoders and I have these categories, right? That I train. And I using an optimizer called uh, Adam, right? 
Um, and then I fit the model to do some tests. I'm looking for the currency, loss functions, and things like that. And I'm doing some predictions. And finally, I'm saving the model. So, um, so I'm, it's, it's one binary file. It's almost like a jar in a sense, but it's not really a jar. Uh, so I'm saving this span model dot keras. Uh, this is like the old format. Nowadays, people would save with .h5, for instance. Um, and I'm using uh, Pico to also save the tokenizers, right? The tokens. Then I can load this uh, to just do predictions now because it's trained. So if you go to my predict file, now I load the tokens, right? The, the, the Pico file. I load the module, right? And now I can do predictions. So I use my tokenizer to tokenize the text I receive. I'm doing some padding. Uh, and then I, I do the prediction and I say, okay, uh, is this a span or not span, right? And here I have some examples. Let me, I think I have the outputs here. Uh, yeah, so here's me doing the trainings, right? Uh, during the training, what you want to see is the currency going up and you want to see... Uh, the loss uh, going down, right? Um, so you see here, currency start with uh, 54%. It ends with 90, which is pretty good. The loss was uh, 68, it ends with 58, right? Uh, you wanna keep loss uh, below one. And here's the results. So we a trip to Hawaii this summer, spun, correct. John, I cannot go to the party, prediction not spun, correct. And honey, I'm running late. Please start uh, cooking the dinner, not spam. Correct. Right? I run this program uh, in 14 seconds, right? So not bad. Um, okay. So that was the spam. Next one, I have a chatbot with Langchain in Java. So I'm using a module called Falcon. From Hugging Face. Look how good this is, guys. So with this simple DSL, we load the module. I'm passing some parameters to the module. And then I have a prompt. So I'm saying uh, how the LLM should behave. I'm saying, hey, you are a good friend of mine who likes to answer with jokes. And I say, hey, bro, what's going on? And I get the LLM uh, generated text right here. So let's see what the module said. This uh, is what the module said to me, right? It's trying to be funny. Okay, good. Um, next. Um, okay, so 20. Now I have uh, sun and beddings. And I'm using local AI. Local AI is a big deal. You guys need to take a look on this thing. So local AI, it's like open AI, but open source uh, and running your own machine. Um, so you literally could have a EC2 machine running local AI and just do API calls there and that's it. Um, so you need to run local AI. It's a heavy Docker. You're going to load gigas of information, right? But it's a one single Docker command. Um, let me see. I don't know if I have the Docker file here. Uh, no, but it's just one line of Docker. It's not, not hard, guys. Um, okay, what do we have here? So I'm creating this embedded module. Then I'm loading a Hugging Face module. I want to store the... This is all lang uh, chain in Java. Uh, I want to store the embedded in memory. I could use a vector database if I want. Um, and then here, we are ingesting documents uh, on the module is specifically this PDF, right? So we are loading this PDF and then I point to my local instance of uh, local AI. I have a module there that it behaves like GPT-4. And then I have a chatbot here and um, I'm asking this prompt, give me all football teams, John Croft player in his senior career. And uh, he extracts the answers from the PDF and show it right here. So if you look at the PDF, you're going to see that's there. It's pretty, pretty good. Uh, local AI is amazing. Okay, so local AI, 
Um, okay, the next one is about um, vector databases. So here I'm using OpenSearch uh, in LangChain as a vector database. So let's look to the code. So uh, this is similar to the previous code. Um, I'm using uh, test containers to be able to, to spin up uh, open search container right here in one line. So this under the hood, uh, gonna get a Docker image and in, in, in spawn a Docker container. And then um, I'm gonna start open search. Then I'm gonna put some embeddings uh, there. And I'm gonna use this LOM module from Hugging Face. And then I'm gonna create some text, get some embeddings, right? Another text, get some embeddings. And uh, then I'm gonna ask some question and see the relevance between the embeddings, right? So if I go right here, this is what I got. I like football, right? Um, pretty good. And we see we're using open search as our vector database. Now, the next one, it could be using Llama 3. Uh, this one took a bit while because I'm running on CPU and I had to log in on Hugging Face and I had to go to the model page and accept Meta had to approve me to use uh, Llama 3. Um, so let's go. So uh, here I'm back to using transformers. So I have um, this uh, module which is pertained, right, Llama 3. Then uh, the pipeline from Hugging Face, I'm using the task, which is text generation. I'm passing the module, which is Llama 3. I'm saying that I'm going to use CPU. And I, 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 I did this prompt engineering saying to the AOM, hey, you are a pirate. And you always respond uh, in, in a, in a piratey speak. So who are you? Are you? And I got this answer. <laughs> you can feel the pirate here, right? Okay, that was Llama 3. Now the next one, I'm using a Python library called NLTK. I'm doing sentiment analysis. So I'm loading <clears throat> Vader Lexicon. And to do sentiment analysis is very, very easy. Um, I just call these uh, polarity uh, scores on the text, and that's all it takes. So I have this text. I love coding in Zig. It's a great language. And I have this other one say, I hate safe. Vanilla ice cream is okay. And, you know, we have some inputs and outputs there. And here is the result. We say that uh, I love coding in Zig. It's a great language. I got zero for negative, 40% uh, neutral, 50% positive, and compound uh, 86. I'd say if got zero, 50, 57 negative, not neutral, zero, four positive, and minus two compound. And vanilla ice cream is okay. We get zero negative, 64 neutral and 33 positive and compound uh, 0, 29. Um, okay, so now we're gonna go to Llama 3. This is one of the latest modules uh, released by NVIDIA. It's a chat Q&A with 70 billion parameters. This took a long time to run in my machine. Uh, basically took 10 hours because I was running on CPU, right? And so you guys know, this module downloaded uh, 141 gigabytes of data. Um, you really need space if you want to play with a lot of modules, right? Uh, some of modules are quite, quite big. Um, so this module has 7 a billion parameters and 1.5 tokens, right? If I was on the GPU, probably would be much better, but <clears throat> let's see the code. I'm using uh, transformers. 
I'm just loading NVIDIA uh, Llama 3 module and um, I'm giving this prompt asking, okay, uh, what's the per uh, percentage change in net income from Q4 um, FY23 to Q4 FY24, right? And I have this document that has some um, stock uh, information about uh, NVIDIA as you guys can see here, right? So it will uh, read what is in the document here and produce uh, the answer. If you go here, I have the answer uh, someplace uh, here. What did it? Um, oh, right here. Oh, that's what we got. It summarized the answer, right? So we're doing some summarization. Um, okay, next one, I'm using OpenCV, Open Computer Vision. And in this one here, uh, what's going on is uh, very cool, actually. Let me show the code first, right? So I'm using Computer Vision to load an image. I have a template. I want to detect that template on the image. And then I want to mark that on the image, right? So I have this cool uh, Super Mario picture and the template I passed was this question box. Then I'm marking that on the image. And I have this other one where I have this other picture of Mario. And then my template was a coin and then was marking on the screen where it saw the coin, right? Um, so, and, and this is the code, do not complicate it at all. Now the next one, this one here is pretty cool. So what this one does is, um, okay. So I have this, um, there's Kaggle, which is another famous um, website for uh, machine learning uh, alongside with uh, Hugging Face. Uh, there's lots of uh, good data sets there. Um, there's this data sets called FUR 2013 which has like uh, people's uh, emotions in pictures, like someone sad, someone happy, someone neutral, right? So I have this program in Python that's just like downloading a data set and getting like a CSV file. Then um, I have this other Python here to train the module, right? And I, I need to have some uh, features here, which are the emotions, right? So I have angry, disgust, fear, happy, sad, surprise, and neutral. And these are also labels, right? And then <clears throat> I load the data set and uh, here is my module, right? I have a neural network module here. We combine the module uh, using Adam as uh, optimizer uh, and the module is saved. So I'm gonna have this emotion module dot h5. Then I have a second file, which is main where um, I'm gonna have this cascade classifier and I'm gonna load my module. I'm gonna have my labels here, right? I have some image. And what this code is doing is loading the image, getting the emotion, um, uh, and also plotting on the image what the emotion is, right? And then I have a second image with a uh, square and the emotion. So the result, um, so here's the training, and this is the result, right? I put this picture of the baby, and then it's telling me that the baby is neutral, right? So that's sentiment analysis on a picture. Which one? Okay, so I have another one with a Q&A. So this one, it does question and answering. So. I'm using another model called BERT. So it's a variation of BERT, it's a task. So the task, I'm using Hug Face Transformers. So the task is question and answering. The question is where I live. And the context, my name is Merv and I live in Istanbul. And this is what we got. So the score is 95% confident. It starts on position 31 and 39. It is the answer Istanbul, right? So Q&A.
Now, we're going to do some tech customization. Now it's a different POC. Uh, I'm using uh, Bart. Um, so I have this text, right, about Parrot. And I'm asking him uh, to summarize it. And uh, this is what I got in result. Okay. So summarization. Um, we can also do some tabular Q&A. Uh, this is quite, quite useful. Um, let's go to the code. So I'm using transformers again. So imagine like I have this data with actors and how many movies they made. Uh, and then I ask the question, okay, how many movies like DiCaprio had, right? And then uh, I pass uh, uh, that I want a task on the pipeline called table question answering. And this is the module I want, I want the tapas module from Google. And the output we get is this, right? So it got correct how many movies DiCaprio have. Um, what else? Um, okay, now I was using another module from Google called T5. So here we are using Hugging Face Transformers. We are loading Google T5 module and tokenizers. We are tokenizing uh, this phrase. And what we are asking is to translate from English uh, to German. Uh, and here I have uh, German, right? Uh, and let's see the output. And this is uh, what we got, right? So we're doing some translation right here. Now, uh, nine. Now some JavaScript. So this I'm using a different hugging face library. It's called transformers.js. And this is a React application. So I just, let me remember where, okay. So I have this service worker because this is a bit intensive, right? So this is the module that I'm loading. I'm doing text classification, right? And there's some uh, listeners going on here. Um, it, it has async await as well. Sorry, guys, uh, let me go back. And then I can show the React uh, components. I think they are in app.js. Yeah, so we have some hooks here, some news effect, and I'm loading um, the service worker. And there's some UI that you can type and lively we're gonna use the worker and just get the sentiment from the model right away. So if I go here, this is the UI, how it looks like. Um, and you just type anything on this uh, input text and it will give you the label, uh, the score right away. Okay, this is um, Transformers.js and React. You can use like almost all hugging face modules in JavaScript uh, directly by API, or we can also use ONCs to load the mile, the, the modules, right? Um, so that's that. Now, um, reinforcement learning. And here I have um, using Jim to basically train a Pac-Man game. Uh, so there's this Pac-Man module, right? And I'm doing a thousand uh, iterations on the environment and I train it to play Pac-Man. Um, let me get my VS code so you guys can see reinforcement learning Pac-Man. Um, it is on my POCs folder, right? And let's look here. Let me close this. Let me keep going, keep going. Okay, enforcement learning. Um, Pac-Man, this one here. So let me play the video. So this is the output. Say I play in Pac-Man.
All right. Cool. Um, all right. So this is AI Pac-Man. Okay. The next one, um, we are doing image search by text. So this is very cool. This is showing the embedded in, in action. So using this model called clip, uh, then we get an image. So in this image, there's two dogs, right, on the snow. So if you go back here, uh, let me show the image, right? So guys see that there are two dogs on the snow. Um, and what is going on here is like we are doing uh, embeddings for uh, this uh, texts like two dogs in the snow, a cat on a table, and a picture of Londo. There will be four embeddings. There will be these three text embeddings, and there will be the embeddings for the image, right? And then when we do the cosine similarity, it actually going to show which text is close to the image, right? And that works. So meaning that we are doing image search, right? And you can see here, like for the score, right? How uh, actually the text align with the image, and that's like pretty amazing. Um, that you can do, you know, type text and search on images. Okay, so that's that. Um, here I have some transformers uh, doing some GPT-like. Um, so you're doing question answering. So Grêmio is like a football team here in south of Brazil. Um, and um, it's the team who most won Campeonato Gaúcho in Rio Grande do Sul and asked what's the biggest winner uh, in a Campeonato Gaúcho and definitely going to tell me the right answer, which is uh, Grêmio, right? Now, the next one is object detection. So here, um, what we, let's go to the code first. This is pretty cool. So um, I'm using something called VIT. Uh, then I basically ask to classify an image uh, with a label, right? And I have some examples. I'm going to do a live demo of this one here, right? So I'm not going to show the results, so I'm going to let you guys see on the live demo. Uh, now the next one, we're going to generate and execute code at the same time with AI. Um, so I'm using a mod called Big Code in uh, Hugging Face. And then um, I just get the prompt. I tokenize it. I call uh, the model. I get the output. Um, I get this code, right? Um, then I need to do some replacement because it's going to get me this out. And this won't compile, right? Um, I'm adding a definition of a function uh, because the code is not generating that. Um, and I'm calling the function, right? But he's giving me the content of the function. And then I'm just doing an exec in Python to be able to execute the code that just was generated by AI. So the code that AI generated was this. This is the code that was generated. And this is the output of the code after me running the code at the hunt time. So at the hunt time, I gave a prompt, AI generated the code, and I also executed the code and got the result. Right, so that's like pretty amazing. Um, what else? Um, okay, the last three. Now I'm generating unit tests. Okay. So I'm using uh, Code Llama uh, module from Hugging Face, uh, and then I'm giving this prompt. So I'm saying, hey, I have this Java class, which is a calculator, has this method. And I have this method, I want you to fill me the code here, right? So I have, this is called masking. Um, so I'm asking here to replace the fill me with uh, the tokens uh, that the LM model generates from me. And the output, guys, that we're going to get uh, is this. This is the test uh, generated, right? So it generated a unit test for us. 
but this is the result. Um, the next one is called VQAs, like mm -hmm. visual questioning answer. Um, so here I'm using a, a test on this module and I'm asking what is the total, right? So let me show you guys the image, right? So I have this image, which is like a purchase order, and you guys can see the total is right here, right? And then I ask, okay, what is the total, right? Given this image, and this was the answer, right? So it, it can answer questions based on image, right? This is really, really cool. Uh, and as you guys can see, there's very few lines of code, right? Because we're using hugging face models. Um, okay, final one is a um, multi-module storytelling I did. I will not show the image because this one I'm gonna do a live demo. But this one, I'm using multiple modules, right? I'm using GPT-2, um, I'm using GTTS, I'm using uh, speak, uh, speech uh, recognition, I'm using sentiment analysis, I'm orchestrating a bunch of things uh, in, in a single output from Gradio, right? So uh, this will be the last demo I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna skip this for now for a moment. Okay, now let's see the live demos, right? And uh, hopefully all it goes well. Um, there's some things I wanna show here, right? So let's start in order. So Hugging Face, uh, once you create an account, they're like a GitHub, right? So they have uh, data sets, uh, they have model cards, uh, they have a lot of information, documentation, they have all the hyperparameters, uh, and they have this thing called spaces, where you basically can have like a Git um, user, and you can commit code, and you can run the code. And of course, they make money for hosting, so you can pay more if you want to run on GPU, but they have some Docker infrastructure where you can actually run on CPU, right? Uh, so this interface was generated by Gradio, right? And I can type some initial text and a question, and I'm gonna get an output. So this is a LOM chat using Dialog GPT from Microsoft. It's a GPT-2 like architecture. Uh, the cool thing with Gradio that you have an examples, and then um, Hugging Face Space is gonna pre-compute the examples for you. So then you can run the examples very very fast, right? So I have this initial test that is a man walking into the bar and the question is what happened? He got a drink, right? So clearly he's paying attention to what's going on. Uh, and then I have this other one, he's trying to be funny, right? Because I said, okay, according to no one, the purpose of life is about the journey is learning, improving just 42, which is a you know, reference to the very good book and movie. And then, it's, and then I asked the question, okay, according to no one, what's the purpose of life? And he said, I think it's 42. And then he gave me a <laughs> joke here, right? Okay, um, if you click here, you can see the files, right? You can see all the code that I'm running there, right? And uh, that is uh, very nice. Sometimes these machines, because I'm not paying, they're lazy, they go down. But if you click here on the space, you're gonna be able to run. If you go to my profile, Hugging Face, you can see um, all the applications that I build on Hugging Face, uh, and you can click there and, and, and run. You also can follow me on Hugging Face if you want. Um, okay, the next demo uh, I call Crawl PT. So basically, crawl a bunch of websites, um, and uh, based on the website, I ask a question and give me an answer, right? So, like, I have this one. Um, that ask you, okay, what's technical debt? Uh, and say the title is not wrong, right? But could be better. Uh, and there's this other one, like I, I, I link it to one of my blog posts, ask, okay, what's a triple monolith? And services can be distributed monolith, that's correct, right? Uh, so it, it basically goes there and crawl um, some website and feed this context to the module, and then you can ask uh, questions. Now let's go to the next demo. This one I found it very interesting. Um, so basically you can upload any image. Uh, I'm gonna detect what is on the image and I'm gonna label it. Um, so I have one of examples here, it says like a brown bear uh, is 99% sure. This one says is a bean hen spaniel, like a dog, 92% sure that's correct. And this one says a speedboat is 83% and it's also correct. Okay, 
the next example I have um, is like uh, I think the most cool ones I have it here. Um, so these two are using multi modules. Um, so I have some examples, right? Uh, like this one here. And what, what this module will do is base it on a text. I'm going to generate an image, but will not be any kind of image it will be a comic style of image. Then there will be a second module that's going to kick in and, and base it on this text. You're going to generate a story for me. Then there will be a third module that are going to kick in based on that story. It will generate an audio, right? Then another module going to kick in and give me the sentiment analysis of the story. Okay. I put some other examples like Ninja Turtles here, uh, and there's like this uh, guy uh, on a desert, right? Okay, final demo. This one here, uh, you can upload a picture, and then uh, once you upload a picture, it will do something similar to the previous one, but a little bit uh, different. So you're gonna use your image, and then the first model gonna kick in, and we'll describe the image. Once the image is described, it will generate some story for that image. Uh, and then it's gonna generate some audio telling that story. And then finally, the last model, I'm just gonna submit. This one, we might need to wait a little bit, right? But the answer is gonna come back. There you go. So it says that it's a white boat traveling through the water. That's correct. And this is the story that generates for us. And the score. That's it. All right, guys. Uh, that's what I got. Uh, thank you so much. Um, take care. Bye.